Hello everybody and welcome to the Defense System Supplement for my Marvel Heroes 2015 Beginner's Guide. The developers wanted to take what was a very loose system of defensive stats where some heroes got certain powers, others didn't get any at all, and there were diminishing returns on every single statistic. They wanted to tighten up the system into something that was much easier to understand, much more straightforward, and had only a few key aspects to it that really merge into one another to create an overall much more streamlined and effective defensive system. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started in talking about what actually happened. There were major changes on both sides of the damage equation. First off, the damage done by mobs throughout the games has been substantially reduced. In addition to that, now we have a very simple and straightforward damage reduction percentage. This is built by combining numerical values for defense rating, dodge rating, and deflect rating. In addition to contributing to the overall damage reduction, dodge and deflect also have their own separate bonuses that they give as well. Defense has the most effect on damage reduction overall because that is all that it does. It only associates itself with the damage reduction while the dodge rating gives you a chance to completely avoid any incoming damage temporarily. This is the original mechanic that dodge used to have back before it was changed to reducing it by 50 percent now the deflection has replaced what dodge was which is to reduce the damage by approximately 50 percent in addition to those effects though dodge and deflect also add a relatively small percentage to the overall damage reduction stat in this case, 40% of a player's dodge chance will be added to damage reduction and 20% of a player's deflection chance will be added to damage reduction. All three statistics are still based off of rating, however, which is simply the large numerical value that is then converted into these percentages. On numerous hero powers, gear, omega nodes, etc., you will see an increase in the rating multiplier for these individual statistics. What this means, for example, is if you have an increase in 20% defense rating and your original defense rating was 5,000, it would now be a total of 6,000. And this is what is reflected on the statistics page. This is also true for both the dodge and deflect ratings. Once the overall rating values are calculated, the percentages are calculated from those and they are also expressed on a hero statistic sheet. There are certain powers that quote unquote get around this through damage negation mechanics. Some powers have the wording that is akin to takes X percent reduced damage. Amongst several others, we have Punisher, Ghost Rider, and Moon Knight which use these. One of the major issues with the original system was that it severely hindered melee based heroes. They rarely had a high enough defense rating to really be able to survive extensively in melee combat without some other mitigating mechanic. Now with this new damage reduction system, what happens is most melee centric heroes will have a straight up 8% increase in their overall damage reduction. This will most often be built into passive powers or if you have a specific hybrid hero such as Spider-Man or Winter Soldier who uses both ranged and melee attacks, then you will have some sort of a proc that gives you an increase in your damage reduction temporarily at least. Attributes have also been adjusted to help out with this new system where durability now grants defense rating and speed grants both dodge and deflect rating percentages. As far as individual heroes and builds, the way it works is each hero now has one or several passive powers that grant two out of the three statistics, whether it's defense and dodge, dodge and deflect, etc, etc. The only hero that has all three naturally is Taskmaster, because he's Taskmaster. One of the great things about making the adjustment to the system like this is now you can feel like all of the characters act more canonically. For example, somebody like Hulk has defense and deflect. He's so big, he's not going to be trying to get out of the way of things. He's just going to stand there and take it. Same thing with somebody like Colossus or Juggernaut. Whereas heroes like Nightcrawler or Spider-Man are going to be relying on dodge and deflection because they rely on their ability to get out of the way rather than simply being able to take a hit. 
All changes aside, though, the overall goal for this was to really not change the way that certain characters play. For example, somebody like Doctor Strange still acts very similarly like a glass cannon. Anybody who is a very ranged-centric hero will have a comparatively reduced damage reduction stat. The idea behind this, again, is really just to simplify the entire system and sort of bring it back to something that's easier to understand, as well as decrease the overall range for the the entirety of the damage system. Whereas before, you could look at it as we were on a scale of 0 to 100, and going from 99 to 98 really wouldn't be a perceivable difference due to diminishing returns. Whereas now, we're only on a 0 to 10. Going from an 8 to a 9 substantially increases the ability for your character to survive. This is particularly true when it comes to the gear slots 1 through 5, because that is a massive amount of potential damage reduction that we really didn't have before. So this new system really makes it so that you can actually gear for defensive purposes rather than strictly offensive purposes or just filling in the slots. As of right now, with maximum rolls, the gear slots 2 through 5, which are the ones that have defensive ratings, will grant up to 27% damage reduction just by themselves. Again, meaning that actually gearing for this is not only very possible, but virtually necessary for survivability purposes. If you want to see more specific details about what was changed and how it was changed, feel free to take a look at the forum post links in the description below this video. There's specific information about changes to items, powers, omega nodes, etc., and also the specific formulas that are used to convert the rating values to the percentage reduction values as well. With that, thank you very much for watching this supplement on the defensive system changes from my Marvel Heroes Beginner Guide. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.